Side do you like? Like that side? That's fine. Both sides, my good side. You know. I know you are. You're the looking man. The woman, like, oh, I'll take a picture. It's my good side. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah. 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 Thanks for joining us once again. Jim Barnett here, Warriors Training Camp Live. And remember, you can ask questions just like I'm going to ask Draymond Green from our fans in just a few moments. You can ask questions by submitting them on Twitter. You can submit them on Facebook and also Instagram. Fourth day of training camp. How does your body feel? Sore. A little sore, but, um, you know, it feels good, you know, to be back at it and, you know, going at it with, with the teammates, you know, each and every day. You know, one thing we talk about is making each other better. And, you know, we've been going hard, kind of ready to get out there and face somebody else, you know, the way we're beating up on each other. But at the end of the day, it's going to make us better. But like I said, feeling a little sore, but not nothing I can't get through. I'm glad to hear you say that because I've been talking with a lot of players. And they say, oh, I'm just fine. I'm thinking, well, the training camp's not hard enough if you're not sore. So finally, I get the truth from someone, and I appreciate that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm a little sore. Like I said, there's nothing I can't get through, but I'm definitely a little sore. Going to hit the cold tub after this. You know, I'm looking at stats last year, and, and you got to play a lot as a rookie, and maybe that was unexpected for you. Didn't shoot the ball well in the regular season, but certainly – shows promise when you progress and you went to the playoffs and you shot the ball so much better so I'm gonna ask you right now does it feel does your shot feel better after working out over the summer in this training camp it feels a lot better I'm a lot more confident in it um, I think that was the number one thing you know I was out there a little banged up and couldn't really get the right you know amount of legs into my shot each day but you know you'll never hear it you know, I'm never going to make an excuse, you know, so at the end of the day, I didn't shoot well, but, you know, over the summer, it was something that I really worked on, and, you know, it's still not where I wanted to be yet, because I feel like I can always get better, and so I'm going to continue to try to improve on it, but definitely shooting a lot better throughout training camp and a lot more confident in it. Are you a player that plays better under pressure? It seemed like, because you were terrific in the playoffs, now you've got a team that can contend with anyone, and you're going to have to fight for playing minutes on this team. And, and for some reason, I just think you kind of thrive on that pressure. I definitely thrive on that type of pressure. Um, you know, I've always been the type of guy who played better, you know, under pressure. Whether, you know, back when I first got to college, I didn't used to practice hard, you know. And it was like Coach Izzo used to always tell me, have to be a better practice player. You have to be a better practice player. And I'll get in the game and I'll just kill. And it will kind of make what he was saying to me just like, you know, if I wasn't a guy who, you know, understand where he was, understood where he was coming from, It'll be like, well, you know, I'm playing good in the game, so I need to practice better for it. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, I knew it was something that I can get better at, so I made a conscious effort to continue to get better. And, you know, over my years, I got a lot better and, you know, eventually became one of the better practice players and game players. So, you know, any time, you know, I just feel like, you know, with one of my assistant coaches, Coach Bruce from high school, we always used to say the lights on, it's time to perform. You know, so any time the lights come on, you know, it's just it's something that takes over my body and it just makes me want to go that much harder. One more question uh, from me personally before we get to many questions here. The fans are really active with you, as you are with them, of course. When you left college, the college atmosphere and the pro atmosphere is usually very different. I, I, I've experienced both myself. And sometimes you get to the professional level, and sometimes there's a little too much business, and you've got egos to work with. Were you surprised at the camaraderie that this team had last year that is carrying over into this season, too, with professional athletes making this kind of money, the different kinds of pressures, and yet there was sort of a collegiate atmosphere and a come-together sort of sense? Absolutely. Um, because, you know, coming up and... You know, coming into the league, all you hear is, man, you know, you got to deal with the superstar attitude. You know, you got to deal with this. You got to deal with, you know, your teammates not talking to you. Like, all these things that, you know, everybody else hear about the NBA, and it may be true. Like, Jared Jack and Coach Jackson them used to tell us last year, you know, us rookies, like, y'all got this, and then you got the NBA. You know, like, y'all ain't seen the NBA yet. Y'all just seen this, which is good. So, you know, I was definitely surprised by it, about the camaraderie of the team, about the way the team bond together. And, you know, a huge part of that is Coach Jackson and the coaching staff bringing us together along with having great guys who want to bond together. So, you know, it's been great for us, and we continue to – we just try to bring that atmosphere from last year and, you know, impose it and make it even better this year. That's very refreshing, I'll tell you that. All right, some of the questions from our fans directly for you, Draymond, from Rachel Avila. 
What did your off-season workout consist of? Um, phew, it was a lot. You know, I did some boxing this off-season. I did some running, you know, a lot of lifting, a lot of court work. But, you know, I had some specific things that I wanted to work on this season. You know, and part of the boxing was I wanted to get quicker. I wanted to get my hand speed better and get in better shape. You know, a boxing workout is a beast. So, you know, that was one of the things that I wanted to do along with on the court. You know, I wanted to improve my ball handling, wanted to improve my jump shot. You know, so that was a couple of things that I worked on a lot this throughout this summer. You wouldn't seriously consider changing uh, sports and going into boxing, would you, after that? Uh, it's too <laughs> tough for me. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. All right. Uh, Cam Tandy, it might be Thandy, how did it feel making that last second shot against the Heat last year? I mean, it was a great feeling, you know, especially being, you know, at, up until that point, I had really just started playing, you know, and on that road trip, I started getting significant minutes and, you know, go in world champs, you know, LeBron James, a guy who you've watched growing up forever, you know, Dwayne Wade, a guy who you've watched growing up, you know, all those guys, and you come in and hit a game winning shot, you know, and as a rookie, it's like, man, you know, wow, like I just hit a game winning shot against the Heat, you know, but one thing you learn real quick, <laughs> the NBA, the NBA games come real fast. So if you try to dwell on that shot, you know the next game is gonna be a little rough for you because you're still dwelling on that. So it was good, you know. I was, you know, I was happy about it that night, but the next day it was time to move on. Well, it gave us broadcasters a real thrill. It was a terrific win. Jason Herman wants to know: In what areas has your game most improved over the off season? Would that be shooting? Uh, shooting and conditioning. You know, I think you know condition is just probably the most important thing. And, and a basketball player's game because if you, you're not in shape your shot won't fall as often you, you can't do as much you're going to miss some help you know you're going to miss out on so many opportunities if you're not in shape so i say the number one thing is conditioning all right scott vory who do you dream about shutting down on defense i don't dream about shutting down anyone um you know just <laughs> i'm always the type of guy whoever i'm needed to guard you know that's what i'm willing to do and I'm not saying I'm going to shut everyone down. You know, this is a league where you're talking to top players in the world. Probably not going to shut too many people down, you know, but, you know, just my job is to go out there and to make it tough on them and the shots that they do hit, make sure they're tough, contested shots. And, you know, some of those you just have to live with. At Charlie Seath, who is your all-time favorite player? All-time favorite players, you know, everybody, Michael Jordan and Shaquille O'Neal. Pretty good pair. Yeah, the, no. the, big, the big and the small and the, the dominant. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, I, to me, Michael Jordan is just, I, I still love him too. Yeah, I, I really do. Unbelievable. All right, this is at Nihar underscore Pat. What are your personal and team goals for this season? I don't, you know, I'm not really the type of guy who set too many personal goals. You know, I've, I've never been into that. You know, I'm always a firm believer. And if you win games as a team, the individual stuff, it'll come, you know. And if you go out there preparing, trying to win, you know, do this and do that as an individual, you want to kill the team goals and the individual stuff don't happen, you know. So I've always been the type of guy who I'm, I'm just, I just focus on team goals. And if I focus on those team goals and everyone else does, all the things that we will want to happen as an individual are going to happen anyway. So, you know, of course, we're going to set the bar high, you know. So we're going to go out trying to win as many games as possible and try to take this thing as far in the playoffs as we possibly can. And, you know, that's our goal each and every day. But, the, you know, it starts with a day-by-day -day goal, and that's to get better each and every day. Finally, the last question from Ant Santos on the reel. It may be uh, rhetorical. You've probably answered it. I think I know what you're going to say here. After shedding that weight, what's the biggest difference on the court for you? I guess it would be the conditioning. Absolutely, conditioning, but also being able to move a lot better. You know, um, you know, whether it's laterally, whether it's up and down the floor, whether it's quickness with the ball, I feel so much more comfortable you know, just moving around you know, without all the extra weight. My body feels a lot better. My knees aren't hurting, you know, so all those things that weight made a difference in and you know you don't really realize it and so you know that was something that I wanted to do this summer and it's, it's definitely helping me out a lot. Well we look forward to you more in training camp and upcoming games and of course the regular season which is just right around the corner. Terrific interview I tell you it's always a pleasure talking with you Draymond. Thanks a lot thanks for having me uh, thanks for having me and congrats again. Oh thank you very yes, much. Sir. All right I'll be having a discussion with David Lee in just a few moments.
Cool. Cool. Draymond, he's fun to talk to. Good guy. Oh, man. One of the best. I know. Jim Barnett back with you, Warriors Training Camp Live, and as I promised, David Lee, the All-Star, the first All-Star that the Warriors had since 1997. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to first ask you, that's, that's so special. I know you were an All-Star before in New York, but to make the All-Star team, and then you make All-NBA third team, a very elite group, you got to feel so good about that. I'll tell you, it's, it's a great honor, you know, most you know, specifically because it means that our team has done something. You don't make those... Uh, you don't make the all-star team and, and, and you don't make all-NBA if your team doesn't make the playoffs and, and doesn't have a successful year. And so it was great to go there and represent the Warriors, an organization that's done so much for me. And it's great to uh, to go there and represent last year for the all-star game and also uh, be in the record books and third team all-NBA and, and uh, put the Warriors back in those categories. And I think we're going to have a lot of guys doing that these next few years. I know you came in tremendous shape. It's the fourth day of training camp. Draymond Green just told me. And he was the first one to say that he's a little sore. And I would hope that training camp would be pushing you. How do you feel after the fourth day? I feel pretty good. I've, uh, yes, I've trained all summer for these kind of situations. Uh, but um, coach has, has pushed us pretty good these first few days. And um, I think we've, we've, got a lot of, we've made a lot of progress as a team. I think we're, we're really inching towards, we're, we're starting to get it's itching towards you know, playing another team. I think you know, after a while you get tired of playing against your own guys. We'll be excited when we get to go play the Lakers here. You broke into the league with New York back in the 2005-06 season. Larry Brown was your coach. Yes. I know Larry Brown very well. I would think that, was his training camp a little bit different than this? Uh, yeah, quite a bit different. As a rookie playing for Larry Brown, I uh, had some, some interesting stories we could tell over a beer in the offseason. <laughs> uh, uh, it was a, a very interesting experience. But uh, this has been, you know, coach has a way of, of keeping things very relaxed, but at the same time uh, making it very intense and, and getting out of what we need to. You led the league in double-doubles last year with 56. You're the only player to average 18 points a game, 11 rebounds, plus three assists. But with the roster that you have now that's healthy, and uh, Andrew Bogut's back, it's a deep roster, you could still have the same kind of season but not able to put up those numbers simply because you're a better team. Right, absolutely. I think it's going to be a more balanced approach this year for, for both myself and Steph, um, who had to put up you know a lot of minutes and a lot of numbers last year. Uh, I think that, that you don't even go into the season thinking about those things. So uh, you think about going and trying to be as successful as possible on both ends and, and uh, continue to improve, and, and, and we're starting that here in training camp. And whatever the numbers end up, they end up. And the most important thing is we find ourselves back in a, a good spot in the playoffs and ready to make some noise. Speaking of numbers, you know, I read blogs now and then. People talk about you playing too many minutes. You know what? I look back, and in New York, one year you played over 3,000 minutes. That was, albeit, 81 games. Last year you played 79 games and 2,900 and something minutes. It seems like to me that you're used to playing a lot of minutes. I am. I am. I'm, I'm used to it. Uh, a lot of times in the past it was out of necessity, not out of, not out of luxury. Um, but like you said, we got depth this year, and, and I think that that's going to help all the way around. We have a lot of guys that are versatile that can play multiple positions. So um, while we want to keep you know, uh, the best players on the floor, I think that Steph and I aren't going to have to play as many minutes this year, uh, you know, at least in design. And let's hope we stay healthy, and health is going to be huge for this team. But uh, I think, I think with, with more bodies, it's going to make us even that much more fresh come playoff time. You have a career field goal percentage, percentage average of just under 54%. You've always shot over 50 percent each and every season eight seasons and I'm, and I'm trying to dissect that because you do go out to the elbow I know you don't take a lot of threes but you go out to the elbow and you also make a lot of moves inside shooting left-handed and right-handed how are you able to put the ball in the basket with that kind of consistency because David I very few people and I'm talking about from my era on have been able to be that diverse well, uh, it was a lot easier when I was in, you know, first couple of years and all I was doing was dunking and laying the ball, and that was a lot easier to, to keep that field goal percentage up. You know, now, like you said, I'm shooting a lot of mid-range jump shots, uh, even, even you know, shots that are close to three-point range, um, and, and, you know, getting a lot of double teams and a lot of better defenders on me last year and the year before. Um, you know, it's my biggest thing I always try to concentrate on is taking good shots, taking quality looks, and, um, and, and you know, let all that take care of itself. I think that that uh, if I miss you know, two or three jumpers in a row, then I think rather than being stubborn, a lot of times it's best to, to shot fake and, and get a better shot at the basket and maybe get to the free throw line, things like that. So everybody has off games and, and games where they can't miss, but I just try to be as consistent as possible because I think you know, consistency is the toughest thing in the NBA over the course of a whole season is to, to continue to take good shots and, and be efficient. Not only, though, are you a willing passer, you're a very good passer. Would that factor in to you maybe giving the ball up at times and it keeps the defense more honest and so you can get better looks no i think i, I think unless you're on you know there's maybe three four players in the in the nba that 
you know, uh, that a guy like a Kobe Bryant is going to, you know, probably take a, a ton of shots and, and make a lot of tough ones. But I think a team like ours, um, the most effective way we play is when all five guys are involved, when we're moving, passing, setting screens. Uh, everybody's getting looks. Everybody's playing to their strengths offensively. I think that's when we're most effective. So I, I think, you know, I, I have, you know, we have willing passers on our team, so there's no reason for me to be anything but a willing passer. And, and uh, it's something I enjoy to do and, and you know, Finding Steph for an open three, or finding Clay on a curl cut for a jump shot, things like that. Finding you know big, you know big to big, high low pass to Bogut for a dunk. Those are things that make our team better. Okay, we'll take you off the hot seat here. We'll get some questions from our fans, and remember, you can submit these on Twitter, Instagram, our Facebook at Warriors. Here's one. How, uh, would you rather see the Cardinals play the Reds or Pirates in Major League Baseball playoffs? I know you're a big Cardinal fan. Man, good question. Uh, I'll go with. I'll go with the Pirates. I think they have less experience, and the Cardinals would do better over the course of a series with them. Pirates had a, a, a long, bad run. I know that. This is at Matt Patterson 30. Which rookie are you most impressed with in training camp? Well, I would have to say, let's see. Now, see, I'm going to give you a trick answer to this one because, you know, the first-year guys are, not, are, are technically still rookies until they play a game in their second oh, yeah. season. Okay. Um, so I think Harrison's made a lot of, uh, a lot of improvements in the offseason, as had Kent. Uh, those two guys, Harrison and Kent, are uh, guys that put in a lot of work. I think are going to you know, play a lot more minutes and, and be big contributors for us this year. At Maggie Pilliton, what song do you listen to before games to get pumped up? Wow, the good old music question. Uh, <laughs> we listen to a lot of rap, of course, as a team. Uh, so I'm, I, I like rap a lot, as uh, do I. I also like house music, things like that. Uh, a little bit of rock music. So I try to stay kind of well diverse. I, I, I try to mix it up a little bit, not too much of any one thing. All right. At Post Up Pal. Kind of has a Gasol look there. Yeah, it does. Do you have anything planned, namely pranks, for the rookies this season? That all depends on the rookies and their behavior. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's not, <laughs> it's not us figuring that out. That's, uh, we'll, we'll figure that out depending on, you know, Kent last year was in the clear. Everything was fine. Next thing you know, Steph and a couple other guys, it was time for them to get in the shower. Kent said, hold on a minute. Obviously, that can't happen. So then next thing he knows, he has 80 pounds of popcorn in his car. So uh, it's going to all go by by how they decide to take it, and uh, and we'll go from there. No one likes a cocky rookie. No, no, absolutely not. So we're gonna we're just gonna see how they play it. We're gonna react off that. Good, que right. good question. Post up, pal. <laughs> and finally, at Caleb gets mad. What's your favorite city to play in aside from Oakland? Man, I'll have to go with New York. Yeah, I'll have to go with New York. Going back and playing in New York, which didn't end up so well last year. Playing in Brooklyn was fun. We got that win, but in New York, as you know, I had to stay in the hotel. Uh, handcuffed to the front door, I wasn't allowed to leave because of the one-game suspension. Couldn't but, even go to the arena. So that was but no you saw a hell of a performance, didn't you? Got to see it on television. I was I was sitting there cheering for Steph, jumping up and down in the room, and cheering for the rest of the guys. But uh, that's how it goes sometimes. I'm looking forward to going back there this year. I'm looking forward to the entire season, David. Looking forward to spending some time with you as well. And thanks so much for today. Jim Barnett, 28 years. Have a good one, guys. All right, we'll see you next time here on Warriors.com. I forgot about that. I thought that was... And we're still live, so... Okay. Well, we're still working, folks. I forgot about Rusty Simmons. It's easy to forget about me. Yeah, he's the beat writer for the uh, San Francisco Chronicle. Well, I thought we were actually going to tape it after for some reason or another. Um, but now we might as well let our viewers hear live streaming video and enjoy that. Rusty, how long have you been covering the Warriors? Um, I've been at the Chronicle for 11 years now, and this will be my sixth season doing the Warriors. When you look at this roster, and you look at last year's roster and the success that they had, do you like last year's roster, or do you like this year's roster now? I think I like this year's roster better. Um, last year's roster had a chemistry that I think is probably tough to match, but just on paper, you got to like this group. Um, and I think it now comes down to the coaching staff and some of the leaders um, on the roster to build that chemistry up again. Uh, can they develop kind of that cohesive unit uh, that the Jared Jackson, Carl Landry's bought, brought to last year's group? Um, but this year's team is definitely more talented than that group. When you look at this year's team, where do you see the strongest position, the biggest strength that they have? I know they've got several. I'm just curious about your opinion. Yeah, overall, I would say the wing position. Um, it sounds like uh, 
at least in practice so far, that's been the most competitive one. When you think about the fact that they have Clay Thompson and Harrison Barnes and Andre Iguodala, it sounds like Kent Bazemore is a guy who's been really standing out so far in training camp. And I'm not sure there are a lot of teams that could say we've got four guys that we feel confident in playing at those positions. Um, it's probably easy to say Stephen Curry or Andrew Bogut are the stars of this team and therefore our strengths. But I think just when you think about the depth that they have at the wing, that's probably their strength right now. But when you think about Andrew Bogut saying he's 100% healthy, with the ability that he has, his defensive uh, shot blocking, his ability to pass the basketball, with him at 100%, we can only imagine how dominant he could be in that middle, and, and that's going to help you win a lot of games. Yeah, it could be really game-changing. We saw in that Denver series um, a, a guy who was at 75% maybe uh, and how he changed that series, um, and I think he's such a good fit for this team because he is a rim protector, a, a real game-changer on defense, and then on offense, um, he's so unselfish. Uh, he likes to get other people's involved, and they have so many good shooters. Um, he's a guy that they can go down and use as an initiator to an offense, a hub um, that can draw a double team and kick to those shooters. Um, if he really is 100%, if he's healthy, uh, he, he could be an absolute dominant player this year. If this team does stay healthy, by the way, it's a very deep team. Yeah, they are. And I think that's one thing that Coach Jackson sounds like he's having a lot of fun with. Um, in the past, he's had to convince rookies that they were ready to play, convince them that they were ready to take on roles. Um, the year before that, he had to convince guys who other teams didn't want uh, that they could take on roles. And now he has nine guys who are experienced, proven guys, um, and he's going to be able to mix and match. Uh, he's not going to be asked to use Stephen Curry for 40 minutes. He's not going to have to use David Lee for 40 minutes. He's got a lot of different things that he can do, um, a lot of versatility that he can use, and I think he's really excited about it. Stephen Curry in the playoffs in particular burst on the scene and became a national name. He, he's, uh, he's been hyped, but well worth it. Um, how do you see his game coming off of last year's success, particularly late in the season and into the playoffs? Yeah, he's one of those guys that just kind of loves the stage, right? We saw it in Madison Square Garden where he goes for 54 and then Staples and goes for 47 and then the playoffs maybe took it to another level. Um, this is the first summer where, we did, where he didn't have to rehab, where he could actually work on his game. Um, he says his handle is better. He says his decision making is better. He says his shot's better. I'm not sure how that's possible. Uh, but if it is, uh, that just talks about what an elite player he could be. We've seen video of him dunking, doing windmill dunks. Um, I don't think of him as an uber-athletic player, but if he adds a little bit more more athleticism, a little bit of agility. Um, if he's getting to the rim and finishing, the way he did a little bit more his rookie year when he had those crafty moves around the rim, um, it'll be really interesting to see because people have to respect his jump shot. So if they're giving him some driving lanes, um, he could be an absolute dominant player in this league. One thing about Harrison Barnes, who started every game that he played last year, he there's a possibility, we don't know, it's conjecture now, if Andre Iguodala starts at the three and put Harrison Barnes coming off the bench, what will be his biggest challenge in coming off the bench in his second season? You know what will be interesting is uh, I think a lot last year as a rookie and a little bit because of his personality, he deferred. Um, he deferred to David Lee, deferred to Stephen Curry. Um, if he's coming off the bench, there's no more deference. He's got to be the man. Um, he's going to be asked to create his own shots. Um, he's going to be asked to take a lot of shots. And, and we saw that in the playoffs. that They dumped it down to him on the post and, and he kind of took control of some games. And, and so I like him in that role. I like him coming off the bench, but but he's going to have to step up to that and, and be the man in that situation. It's interesting to see a guy in one way take a demotion from starting to coming off the bench, but in another way you're taking on a much bigger role because he does have to be the man, the scoring guy for that second unit. I know they have a number, and maybe there are different numbers from different players, but uh, about number of wins that they want to get. Uh, what's your prediction, and what do you think they're thinking about, the, the locker room? Yeah, well, the players have said that they want to win more than 50 games, and I think that the, the Warriors haven't done that since 93, 94, so, so really high goals. Um, to me, I think the, while the Warriors have gotten better, a lot of teams in the Western Conference have also. Houston obviously bettered themselves. The Clippers did. Um, I don't think San Antonio's going anywhere, and Oklahoma City's really talented. So if I'm the Warriors, I go into the season and I say, if we can, be, uh, if we can have home court advantage in the first round, if we can be one of those first four teams, we've had a great season. Um, and then you try to better last year. You try to get past the second round of the playoffs. If they do that, if they continue to take one more step toward a championship, which is their ultimate goal, um, I think they've got to be really proud of the season. With this kind of roster, these kinds of expectations, is that going to put more pressure on Mark Jackson? 
I think so. I think so. And um, I've, I've talked to coaches over the years that kind of want to get away from that pressure. And and uh, he hasn't done that. He said, bring it on. We know we're a better team. Um, we've got to rise to the challenge now. And I like that. I like a guy who, who doesn't shy away from that light. Um, he seems to know that there's pressure on this team, that they're supposed to be good, uh, that the front office went out and got them players this offseason. Um, and it doesn't sound like anybody's shying away from it. They want the pressure. They want the limelight. They're excited about it. Um, and now it's up to them to prove that they deserve it. Rusty, thank you for spending some time and giving us uh, your thoughts on the upcoming season of the Golden State Warriors. Uh, thank you very much. We'll have you back again. Sure thing. I appreciate you having me. That's Rusty Simmons, San Francisco Chronicle. I'm Jim Barnett. This is Warriors.com. See you next time.